Welcome to the uh, Dynamic Duel. I'm Franz. I'm Kevin, and welcome to the new Batcave and Avengers Tower, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, listen, man, we've got a lot to talk about. So many different topics, so many different issues. It's fascinating because I don't think we're ever going to run out of topic with this industry because <laughs> almost every day or every week something new comes out, which is very, very cool. But I know that there are a couple of things you've been dying to talk about. So I'm going to leave it up to you as to which topic we start off with first. Well, we, we, we've got to open with the God of mischief. Have you had a chance to watch Loki? I, I and did. And, and that's so a, what did you think? So that's a, that's a great one. That's a great first topic. Uh, I did get a chance to watch it. I do have an opinion. Would you like me to go first or would you like to go first? Go for broke. I want to hear what you think. All right, fair enough. Uh, so I have to be honest with you. I have to be honest with you. I was worried about Loki. Um, I, I think Loki as a, as, a, as a character is a difficult character to handle because I think he's a grand character. He's, you know, the, 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 not the prince of Asgard, but one of the royalties of Asgard, uh, a godly kingdom. And Loki has a particular character in the comic books, and remember we're purists and we're comic book fans, that to be honest with you, I wasn't seeing in the cinematic verse. And I wasn't liking from what I was seeing from the cinematic verse. It isn't to say I hated the cinematic verse, Loki. Um, it is to say that I hated Thor Ragnarok, <laughs> which, which, um, which uh, I think made him <laughs> that much worse. Um, so, I was coming into the Loki TV show with a lot of trepidation. Uh, I didn't think based on, the, based on the advertising of the trailers that they were handling it right because of several things. Um, first of all, there seemed to be a comedic take to it on the trailers. And second of all, something that bothered me was the trailer was Loki being imprisoned by the, by, you know, by the State Department. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, you're not, if you think Loki can be imprisoned by, you know, US government and being interviewed and being, you know, pushed around like a regular prisoner, you're not quite getting Loki. So those things and more worried me about the show. But I, you know, listen, yeah, I have an open mind and I'm going to give it a chance like anything else. I start watching the show and I'm picking up confirmation of those fears. I'm not quite gelling, I'm worried. Uh, and by the way, what I realized is that it's a reflection on my hatred or my dislike for Avengers Endgame, because that opening scene in Loki, where he gets the cosmic cube and disappears, to me, I hate those types of things because it's it insults my intelligence. It's too silly. It's too neat. Like, listen, you know. There's the, 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 the world is being attacked by aliens. There's a cosmic, they don't call it the cosmic cube, um, but, but you know, the, the military is taking care of it and a slapstick situation happens where the case falls open and things and nobody notices. Those kinds of things, you know, to me, insult the intelligence and they go beyond you know, reason of, of enjoying a good movie. So seeing that in the trail, I mean, seeing that in the actual show worried me even more like, oh, this is, this is the path that we're heading. And, uh, and then when the timekeepers came on, I wasn't liking their costume. I wasn't quite understanding who they were. And so it, it literally, the whole thing set up for me to dislike the show. Having said that, by the time I settled and I gave it a chance, it won me over. It absolutely won me over. I like it a lot. Um, nothing significant heavy has happened. This is the setup of the show. It doesn't have as strong of an opening as Falcon and the Winter Soldier from the point of view of action. But I like the way they handled the character. I like the way they handled Loki. Um, he isn't like some silly guy. And, and he is royalty. And he, he has a motivation. And... And I just thought, 
uh, some people just have gravitas. Some actors just have gravitas and they come into a scene and they do the scene and for whatever reasons, reasons undefined and unexplained, it works better than if somebody else does it. I don't know what it is and I wish I understood it. And just a quick little thing, a perfect example of that is, um, gosh, my memory is terrible. What's the show in, uh, on Netflix? Um, uh, anyway, so I don't, so, okay. Jupiter something is. is... Ju Jupiter's landing. Jupiter's, okay. is, is that what it is? Jupiter's yeah. landing. Yeah. All right, so, all right, so, so on, on a side note, <clears throat> Jupiter's landing is a perfect example of that, where for whatever reason, it fails on, on, on many levels. The opening scene just doesn't work. The actors just don't deliver. And, and, um, and so compare that to Loki. Yes, uh, Hindelson is a tremendous actor with huge gravitas. Owens is a tremendous actor with huge gravitas. And those two, almost those two together, made it work for me. And what I appreciated are things like it wasn't humans that are controlling Loki. It's a much more powerful force, which made a lot of sense. And Loki's mischievous uh, uh, character was their full pleasant, his ability to get away with, with you know, to escape. That, I thought that was brilliant. Um, yet his also, his, his, his you know, they, they, they depicted his sort of ruthless, greedy aspect, you know, like, He's, he's a torn character, you know, he's a torn character, but his evil is there. You know, he will burn a village to achieve his ends. He will do that. Um, does he, is he doing it for the sake of doing it? You know, that's a, that's a question. So anyway, to my, my assessment of the show was that, yeah, it gets two thumbs up. I liked it and I'm looking forward to more. I gotta tell you, a lot of what you said about worrying about the show, you and I had the same feelings, okay? Um, they've nailed this on so many different levels. And even though the first show is the only thing we've seen, the reason why I say they've nailed it is because there's a style to it already that from my perspective, that I've picked up on already. The show is bouncing around and hopefully it's not bouncing around too much for the audience to follow it. But what I like about the bouncing factor is that, and th this is a bizarre take on it for me, but it's how I look at it. As Mark Ruffalo said in the Avengers, Loki's mind is a bag of cats, <laughs> okay? And I'm kind of looking at it as the perspective of a lot of the moving around, a lot of the edits, and even some of the action sequences, that that's taken from Loki's perspective. Mm. And because Loki, even though he's a complex character, and he's not crazy, okay, but his mind is constantly moving, he's constantly thinking, he's always up to something. I like that as a perspective. Because it makes me think that's the way that they've structured the show. You're almost getting this from Loki's mind point of view. And I love that in terms of the way that they put it together. I, it just works for me. Um, I truly love how, at least for a few moments, and I, I'm not trying to be a, a spoiler for anyone that hasn't watched it yet, they dug into who he is as a character. And it allowed uh, Tom, uh, Tom Hiddleston to really kind of dig into Loki from an acting perspective. And I thought that was genius. Because when he was watching the, the, you know, basically the tape of his exploits and he started to tear up and get emotional, it was still like, wow, you didn't expect this from Loki as a character. And they went full tilt and then after the attempted escape when he was sitting there and again i don't mean to be a spoiler but i'm going to go ahead and say it when he was talking to owen wilson he basically said i can't go back can i i can't change this can i and literally although he doesn't come right out and say it on a complete direct level it's like no you 
can't do anything that you did before the same way, but you can make positive changes if you're willing to help us. And the whole business of, I don't mean to hurt people, but it's in my nature, it's in my makeup, it's who I am. All of those things combined, they were, it worked for me. It's, it's, it's like creating a cake and having all those layers in the cake. I am really invested now to see exactly which way are they gonna go. Yeah. Um, because even the scene on the airplane, where they took that and where they went with it, I didn't think they were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. Yeah. The, it, it's, but yeah, I, I, I believe the show is going to be very, very successful. I wish it was going to be and truly, you know, want more than six episodes out of this, but that's all the public's going to get. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's 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 the one limitation that we have is the you know it's the, the shows are not as as they don't have as many episodes as we would like them to, to to be. But you know, having said that, hopefully there'll be a season two, a season three, and so on and so forth. And so the quality will outweigh the the quantity of it. I, I, even though we've only seen one episode, I, I have to point this out. Um, I have a bizarre feeling and nothing has confirmed this yet but i have a bizarre feeling that by the time this is over that what we see on loki is going to lead us into thor love and thunder interesting i i, I don't know what it's it's a deep-seated feeling is tom hendelson and is tom hendelson in love and thunder to be honest i'm not sure i'll if he is, then that kind of cements part of my feeling. I'm actually, now that you've said that, I'm going to go to IMDB or go somewhere and look at the cast list. Yeah. I, yeah. I have to now. You, you, you just put that in my brain. <laughs> well, I love, I love the ending because that's the way you're supposed to, st is to, to end the show. Mm -hmm. It's a cliffhanger. And I love the fact that he was like, well, who do you want me to stop? And I was like, you. And and the portrayal of that Loki as a no nonsense evil guy. There's a TV show um, on Netflix. It, I watched it a while ago, maybe a, several months ago. I think it was called The Tudors, but it was about the life of Henry VIII. Yes, uh, and it's a brilliant, it. yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant show. I mean, just great performances. I just love great performances. And again, my goal is to try to understand what makes a great performance compared to. To, to not a great performance. I haven't quite figured out exactly what that difference is. And it's it's everything, right? It's the cinematography, the direction, the editing, the, everything plays into, and, and including the actor's performance. Right. But when you watch The Tudors, uh, if that's the title of it, you know, you just see quality. But the reason I bring that up is because in essence, that's kind of what Loki is. Loki is that kingly person who feels entitled, who feels superior to everyone else, and who feels like what he is due is above the petty lives of the petty peasants. And it isn't so much that, and by the way, that show the two is brutal, like people get oh. slaughtered and <laughs> on, on a whim, on a whim. Uh, uh, but so that's what it is. That's what, that's who he is. And so he's that character who has been in his mind slighted. In other words, the crown is being taken from him. And so he's willing to really do anything to regain what he feels he deserves. It's a fascinating psychology, to be honest with you, but that's what Loki is. And that's where yeah. the hatred comes from. It's from the jealousy of his brother, who is the ordained king, you know, the one to, to come next. And he's thinking, no, you're not. And he's willing to kill that brother. Right. You know, he's willing to go that far, which in real life people have been willing to do. Here's my question to you. Here's the one thing that I didn't quite understand, and maybe it will be explained later. I don't get that the timekeepers would be this powerful. They would be out of time. They would be controlling the universe, if not the multiverse. They were in control of the multiverse. 
why are, why is Owen Wilson wearing a 1970s suit? Like, why are they in a 1980s office? And, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I don't quite get that. Is Because it, it, it doesn't even relate to, to Asgard, you know, with respect to Loki type of thing. I, I see that as three things, okay? One, I do kind of like the idea that even though it's a little on the futuristic side, I like the idea that they've literally made the locations look like a social security office or something. Yeah. I, I think that's brilliant in terms of, okay, we're, we're not going to load this up with, you know, a lot of, you know, Star Wars or Star Trek looking, you know, sets or what have you. I, I, I just, I like that idea. Two, even though Loki is who he is, the one thing that they have pointed out and they pointed it out with the explanation is that somebody could veer off a given timeline and create a problem. Correct. And they're not saying that it has to be someone, uh, you know, with a lot of supernatural power. It could just be somebody that's kind of greedy or whatever and figures some of this out and, cre and, and creates a problem. And part of why I like it, again, within the space of the uh, uh, of, uh, of the production design is if you ended up having to do that for a human, it might throw a human if you have people running around looking like, you know, the, the Greek gods or, or what have you. So I, I kind of like the idea that they're in standard clothing to some degree. The other thing is, the way that I look at it, because I found it a little interesting when Loki was going back and forth with Wilson and he ended up saying out loud, and you were created by, you know, the, the overseers of all this. And Wilson looks at him and says, yes, which means that, you know, they're well beyond, as you've indicated, anything that Loki would be a part of. So it's almost like in an offhanded way, at least to me, where they can almost snap their fingers and create or ask for a particular thing to be created for the sake of what they need or how they need it. And I think only certain ones based on or certain individuals that are part of the organization actually have the, the, the what I call supreme knowledge to really understand what's going on. Because if you take the one office worker that Loki was interacting with, he's like, well, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of thing. It's like, no, not all of them are all saying or all seeing, all being kind of thing. It's you got your lackeys, but you also have your biggies in charge. It's an interesting way that they set it up. And you're absolutely right. By the way, that was a brilliant catch on your part to say that the jumping around is a reflection of Loki's mind. I didn't get that. And, but now that you mention it, it's, it's absolutely right. But, but you're also right in the sense that it's, it's fascinating because they're doing things that we don't quite understand just yet. You know, uh, we don't quite understand you just yet it, because the timekeepers are all powerful. Obviously, uh -huh. they're extremely powerful. They control the multiverse, but they set it up as a bureaucratic process system. And and as you said, there are clerks within that system who are clearly <laughs> powerless. You know, they're powerless because even a non-powered Loki was able to threaten him. And he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and and you're right. They set it up like a social security office. Um, th there's also a comedic tone to it. I mean, th th they're throwing a lot of things into it. But but. I come away with the overall experience. You know, I could critique, oh, I don't like when that particular thing happened, or I don't like that particular thing. But the overall experience was a pleasant experience. I came away really liking it and wanting to see more. Um, and, and a lot of it made enough sense to me for us to move forward. It didn't, as I said, insult my intelligence. And if anything, it's just raising questions. And I still don't quite know why they would be wearing, what those beings would be wearing you know, a uh, suit and tie, because that's like, that would be, so, you know what I mean? But, but, but it's an interesting thing. It's a, it's a very interesting thing. And, 
And so far, I would have to say, yeah, definitely two thumbs up. Um, it can disappoint. Wonder Vision, the first episode, I liked a lot. I thought it was well done. I thought it was cute for what it was. I thought, you know, they delivered on what they were trying to do. In other words, you know, recapping the classic TV show type of thing. I thought it was very well done. That show ended up terribly disappointing me personally. I know it doesn't just disappoint everybody, but terribly disappointing me. So Loki, first episode, excellent. I liked it. Uh, two thumbs up for me. There you go. This looks like a job for Superman. Hey, look! It's Spider-Man! The dynamic, the dynamic duo, duo returns. Return. Next, Next week, don't, don't listen. listen.